Hey gamers, today we're gonna look at Homesteaders. Let's check it out. To set up the game, you're going to put uh, all these auction uh, tiles in these stacks, one, two, and three. Uh, the auction one will have rounds one through ten. You will stack them in that order. Uh, the other two, you'll put the settlement tiles up front, shuffle them in any order you want. Town tokens next. And then, of course, these two city cards will go on the bottom. And you can shuffle those any way you want. Same thing with deck number three. And you'll put out these buildings down below here. Uh, buildings you'll only have if they say settlement or settlement in town. Uh, you won't put anything that says just town or says city. You'll save those until the rounds dictate. So for instance, if we get down to this round, it starts saying town, what I'm gonna do is I would take out all of the cards that said just settlement. If they said settlement town, I'd leave them in, but I would take all these out of the game and put the town cards from that color into this deck. And then I'd do the same thing with city. I'd remove all the town cards and just keep the city cards. So any buildings you're not using yet, we just set them over to the side of the board. Now, each player is going to have cubes that will be put here, placed on the development track. They'll even get a cube of their own color. They'll even get a homestead of their own color. Let's say I'm playing as blue player here. And they'll even start off with six coins. Now, what you're gonna be doing in the game, you also get a little cowboy here, is you're gonna be doing a little bit of worker placement here. And what you're gonna do is you're going to place your little cowboy on one of these two little squares. Here would get you a victory point. And victory points are these little tokens, these little sheriff stars. Or here would get me an item. That would mean it would get me wood. So in this case, if I left him there, I would get one wood from the supply. Now, as you see at the top here, it says income, two coins. That means that once we finish placing our worker, we're going to collect our income in anything that we put him on. So I would actually get two additional coins from the bank. But the next thing I'd have to do is I'd have to pay for my cowboys. For each cowboy that I have, that's going to cost me one silver coin. So I would essentially get two coins, but have to give one back up to pay for my cowboy worker. Now, after that is decided, then we get to the meat of the game, which is the bidding. Now, starting with the start player, uh, and the start player will pass around to each player to whoever wins the first auction. They even give you a little sheriff star to remind you, whoever wins auction number one, they will be start player for the next round. And you're going to flip over each one of these little tiles, and it's going to give you options to bid on. Now, uh, in player order, starting with the start player, so let's say it was me, I was blue, I bid here on the track at $3. Yellow says they're going to be here at 5 Red said, I'm going to bid here at 4 Green said, you know what, I'm going to outbid Matt, I'm going to go 5 I said, okay, I'm going to outbid Red, and I'm going to get 5 And Red goes, uh, this is all too expensive to me, I'm out. The first person who passes and they don't win one of these uh, gets to go up on the development track. Now, in a three-player game, you would remove the third track. You wouldn't play it. In a two-player game, you would stay with two tracks, but you'd have a dummy player playing as the third player. But this is for a four-player game, and so you'd have all three stacks available. Now, if red passes, they will move up on the development track. So they get a little something for their loss, even though they didn't get one of the auctions. And the first thing on the development track they would get is a trade token. Now, trade tokens are very important in the game because with trade tokens, you can go to the marketplace, and everyone has these little double-sided marketplace uh, player aids, and with the trade token and whatever else you're using to trade, you can get multiple things in the game. Uh, so steel, copper, uh, apples, coins, uh, moo moo cows, there's tons of cool stuff. Let me just show you some of the stuff that you can get in the game. Uh, so the tokens look really nice in here. So this is all the things you can trade for if you need something. Uh, so that's what trade tokens are for. Now, if I, let's say red doesn't win another one, they would move up again on the uh, uh, development track, and this time they would have the option of getting another trade token or the new thing that opened up 
is a railroad token. And what railroad tokens do is they give you extra income in the game. So for instance, let's say Blue had this. Blue, at the start of the next turn, after he's you know placed his worker, is not gonna get just two coins, he's gonna get three coins because he has some railroad work done. So this actually gives you more income in the game. Another one, another loss would bring him up here and he could get an extra cowboy. So that way Red could maybe have two cowboys working with him. Or if he moved up this track, again, he can get anything back on these past tracks or the current track he's on. So if he lost again, you'd go up here and you can get any one of those resources that I showed you. And then finally, at the top here, you can have your choice of anything back on the track or three victory points. And so that's how it goes for the loser of each round. Of course, during the game, everyone's gonna be up the development track in some way, shape, fashion, or form. But let's talk about the winners. What would happen with the winners? Well, they would pay the money that they spent, which in this case would all be five bucks. And so they give in their five coins there and then they get the chance to build that type of uh, building so for instance green player got, got to build residential or a commercial building and so green player can go through either one of these stacks and they can look through them and decide which one they want to build now the cost is right here to the side this one costs a wood and a steel this one's just wood that's a wood apple and steel and even if let's say I'm a green player and I only have wood I need steel or well, Remember, you can I could take this, go to the marketplace if I had a trade token and three coins, trade it in for a steel, and then use that steel to build my, in this case, grain meal. And once you build something, it comes right out here. Now, each one of these buildings give you special things in the game. Uh, sometimes they give you victory points at the end of the game. Uh, this one gives me income of an apple. Sometimes they just give you extra options for your worker. Uh, they have different little things. Uh, when built by trade, when, when built, you get a trade token. So they're very self-explanatory and easy to understand, and each one is different. So again, I could pick commercial here as well if I wanted to try for one of these commercial ones. And as you see, the cost is uh, located on the corner, le top left side of the tile. Now, that would be Green's Choice, a residential commercial. Yellow won this one, and of course, that means they only get blue tiles, which is the industrial stack. So I couldn't get one from one of these, but yellow player could shift through all these and decide which one they want to purchase. And then blue player, they got something special here. They actually won a chance to get an extra cowboy and advance up the railroad track. So it's, it's a little bit uh, something different to get. I'd get an extra cowboy for free, and if I was blue, I could move up and get a resource as well in that case. So that may not be bad. Now there are some tiles in the deck. Here's one that says any. That means, of course, when you win it, you can, you can build any type of building. Now, after that's over, of course, you're going to remove these and then remove these. Start back over again with the worker placement, the income phase, paying your cowboys, and then flipping all these over to bid again. Now, of course, the game is going to go for 10 rounds there. And during this game, if you start losing money, man, I really need some money. I'm losing money. I need money for bids and stuff. Well, you can, of course, get a debt token any time in the game. It gives you two extra bucks. You can grab as much as, much as you want, but of course, to pay them off costs five. Now, at the end of the game, you definitely want to have these paid off before final scoring because these will cost you victory points as well. So, for instance, let's say I had... Uh, one of them, that would cost me one victory point. If I had two of them, this one would cost me one victory point, this one would cost me two victory points, totaling in three victory points. If I had three debts, that would cost me six victory points. So as you can see, you really don't want to run up your debt because that's going to take away victory points at the end of the game, which of course could make you the loser. Now, speaking of the end of the game, they have these player shields is where you're going to keep all your money. It's where you're going to keep all your uh, resources. They're really awesome. They give you little tips here. That's the tip about the gold being five silver. And they will also tell you, hey, after 10, here's how you, you pay off your debt. Any undead, uh, unpaid debts here also says if you want to get extra victory points, uh, you can cash in gold, copper, 
or uh, Moo Moo Cows, and you can actually get two victory points per one of those items. The rest of the items like wood and steel and apples, they're kind of worthless at the end of the game. But of course, you're going to be using this, of course, to add up victory points. You're going to be using your marketplace because your marketplace can also be cashed in for to get coin to pay off that debt and maybe get you some victory points. And at the end of the game, the player with the most victory points wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Woo! Um, I'll be honest, my gaming group absolutely adores this game. They went nuts over it. Uh, there is a lot of strategy. At first we thought, well, who would want trade tokens? I got so many trade tokens. And then they realize, oh, you got to have trade tokens to get all those items. There's no way you're going to have all the buildings that provide each one of those items. And so trade is really important. You won't go to the marketplace much at first, maybe, but after a while, you'll start using one trade token after the next, after the next, and wishing you had more. Uh, we were complaining at first. A few people had like all these trade tokens coming in as income. He wouldn't complain at the end. He won the game with all his trade tokens. So those are very important. Uh, Getting the railroads are very important. Man, you think I'll never get debt. Five bucks to pay it off? Mm -mm. I think everyone got debt. Uh, oh, everyone got debt in the game uh, when we played. We eventually had to get that money up front because you got you want to win that bid, but you don't have enough. I'll go into debt to win that bid. Uh, bids can get pretty high. Uh, I don't know what our highest one was. I think it, I did, we didn't get to the 21 square, but we got the one right under it because at the end, those uh, city tokens, woo, there's a lot of big stuff you can get with that. Uh, so uh, the game, you know, it, it moves on. Now, a lot of the tokens, like rounds one through 10, stack one, those are set. Like every time you play the game, they will always be the exact same. So playing this for a while, and there's not gonna be much, you know, the games aren't gonna be that much different because you only have four settlement tiles to shuffle, four town tiles to shuffle, and two city tiles to shuffle. So eventually you play this game enough, you're gonna know what's under that deck. But it still, still can change the game depending because anyone can get any buildings they want. So I do, we've played a couple of times and so far I haven't seen where it's gotten old. In fact, my gaming group, like I said, absolutely loves it. You want to be the start player. You want to be the first person to put your uh, bid down and you want to bid high so that another player won't bid over you. You start counting your money. You start counting your debt. There's things that there's uh, I think a bank that gets rid of debt every round. You want to get that bank if you have tons of debt. Uh, it, it The game influences you to make choices uh, you know, for you sometimes based on what you're looking at and what you need. But oh man, the tokens, everything looks super nice. This is the second edition. I heard the first edition looks awful, but the second edition is super nice. And my entire gaming group loved it. Now, there is one little complaint I have about it. Um, if you do not win uh, some of the opening auctions, you're dead. You're gone, you're out of the game immediately. There is a bad runaway player uh, problem with this. Uh, and that was me. I, uh, I did not win a few of the auctions. I thought, well, eventually they'll run out of money and then I'll win some auctions. And that made me lose like the first three auctions, I think. And after that, I, I won one and then lost two more. And I was like, oh my goodness, people were like going into debt, buying, buying me out. And by that time, I had nothing. I had no resources to build upon, no trade tokens to trade in. I was just trying to barely make ends meet the entire game, just trying to survive and not go bankrupt. And so for me, it was a miserable experience. But that's because if you don't win some of those first, you've got to win one of the first four auctions or you are done. You're out of the game. You are out of the game automatically. I don't like that, uh, but that is my only complaint is that you can get out of this game immediately. <laughs> but, oh well, uh, my gaming group absolutely adores this and this is gonna be one of the favorites that's probably gonna hit the table for years to come. All right, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on.